Welcome to today's reflective act of worship from Newcastle Cathedral. We hope you will find it helpful as we gather today, from many different places, yet one in faith and hope. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship God together. Wherever you may be, try to find a still place, a safe place, a place where you can take a moment to pause in body, mind and spirit. Remember that there are many others, both near and far away, pausing and praying with you in this moment too. Let us pray. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Having stilled and prepared ourselves to hear God's word for us, let us listen to the Gospel reading appointed for today, which comes from Matthew chapter 18, beginning at verse 12. What do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. Remembering that the word of God is living and active, let us now reflect on what God might be saying to us today through this passage of scripture. Today's reflection is offered by the Dean. Today's Gospel reflection is about a passage from Matthew's Gospel, just a tiny passage, um, but one perhaps that's over familiar, if anything. Over familiar in that we probably have um, Luke's Gospel in our head when we read Matthew's Gospel. Even the Bible uh, that I have seems to have Luke's Gospel in its head when it gives the heading in Matthew's Gospel. The parable of the lost sheep. It's a very familiar story, one that we love and we enjoy as Christians. This idea that the shepherd would look after the one sheep that gets lost as opposed and leave behind the 99 that, um, that he's, he knows are okay. But Actually, the difference between Luke's account and Matthew's account is quite interesting and stark. Luke never uses, uh, sorry, let me get this right. Luke always uses the word lost. It fits his theme. The lost coin, the lost son, the lost sheep. But it's not the word that Matthew uses. He uses a different Greek word which means to go astray, to wonder, to leave the right paths, not to get lost but to almost intently take a risk, to go outside the boundaries of the paths that everyone knows. And in Luke's Gospel the shepherd goes after the sheep that has gone astray, erred is another, another way of interpreting that word, but I always like the positive bit that's taken a risk. It's as if he wants to uh, make sure that not just those who follow are, um, are to be looked after, but even those who push the boundaries out. I find that quite an interesting idea to be, uh, and quite encouraging. I don't know about you, but it seems to me this gone astray bit's quite important. The second bit about the story that fascinates me is that the maths doesn't add up really, does it? Not if you're a shepherd. Why would you leave 99 sheep 
at risk and go off and look for just one errant sheep, uh, one risky sheep, one that pushes the boundaries, one that gets under fences and goes off the paths. Wouldn't it be better staying with the ones you've got and counting them in? Well, that's true, isn't it, really, in logic maths, but it's not true in biblical and gospel story mathematics. So much so that the Gospel of Thomas, one of the, uh, the, the Gospels that we don't have in the main scriptures, but belongs to outside the, the kind of the apocryphal kind of stories. It says that the, this sheep was the fattest and the biggest, and that's why I went after him. They've got to find a good reason. Uh, but it also seems to me that it, um, it would be foolish to think that the shepherd just left the others uh, on a wind and a prayer to look after themselves, probably left them with the helpers. But he personally was intent on finding the sheep that um, that went off, risked, went astray, erred. Well, I don't know how you put all that into a kind of thought for yourself. The big point of the story, though, is not actually the care of the shepherd or even the finding of the sheep. If you read it, it's the great rejoicing there is by the shepherd when he founds finds the sheep. And if you're like me, well, I hope you're not completely, but never mind, you might be. I hope you'll just take account of the fact that when I read it, I pretty much know where I'll be. I'll be the one that's wandered off down some cul-de-sac somewhere, little cranny uh, of my thoughts and errors, er errors and ideas. And it's such a wonderful thought to think that God will leave the cosy ones to be looked after perhaps by his helpers and his sheepdogs. But he might just personally be concerned about those who, like me, have a propensity to, uh, to wander off and go astray. So whether you're in the fold or whether you're in a wandering time, and whatever is your default, don't worry, you'll be cared for. And if you are one of those who wanders off and you are astray, know this, that the shepherd himself will be looking for you and caring for you. And he will rejoice when he takes you back into the fold. Bye-bye. <laughs> Take a moment, press pause if you want, to reflect on what, if anything, struck you during today's reflection. Were there words of comfort? Were there words of challenge? And now, remembering that all are precious in God's sight, let us pray. Loving God, thank you for your patient and forgiving love, for never giving up on us when we've got lost. Thank you for staying by our side when we have been looking another way. Give us the humility and wisdom to accept your protective and boundless grace. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, our Good Shepherd, help us to follow you in all our doings. May we be sensitive in our response to others' needs and difficulties, being present when others despair, so that all may find peace in your care. Give us the courage to reach out to all whom we encounter, loving them without judgment, and helping them in any way we can. Christ, have mercy. Merciful Father, in this Advent season, save us from complacency and pride in our own efforts. May we follow you obediently through scripture and prayer.
so as to bring light to our journey today and in the future. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, purify our hearts and minds, that when your Son Jesus Christ comes again as Judge and Saviour, we may be ready to receive him who is our Lord and our God. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory, as our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God give you comfort and peace, light and joy in this world and the next, and the blessing of God Almighty, our Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us dwell in the peace and protection of God, this day and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Now that our choirs have returned to sing in the cathedral, the format of our daily reflections has changed. On Thursdays and Fridays, a short reflection and prayers will be offered in the context of a service of choral evensong, which you can follow here on YouTube at 5.30pm or watch at your convenience later. Monday to Wednesday's reflections will remain the same. We hope and pray that you will continue to find them helpful. <laughs>